Hey, it's Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Just got off the phone with a customer. We're diagnosing a static pressure problem uh, along with an airflow problem. He had really uh, low sensible capacity and high latent capacity indicating low airflow. And he was also indicating low static, but we didn't really realize uh, how low his static was because we figured out about 10 minutes in the call that he had not zeroed out his manometers. And we're finding this a lot. And it's very, very important to make sure that you zero your manometers to get all of the credit uh, you want on that vital score. In other words, we want to identify problems and systems. And if your manometers aren't zeroed, they can either be reading way too high and reading a false high static, or in this case, it was way too low, a very low static. And what was happening was it was leading him down a rabbit hole as far as what was the real system problem. So I wanted to just take a few minutes and show you a few things about manometers and where to uh, place them and then how to zero them out, right? So very, very important stuff. So you can see on Measure Quick here um, uh, that I have 1.19 inches of static pressure. And if I had that on there, I might really want to take a look at it and see if it's you know in range or not. Now, what's interesting is uh, I have this manometer right here showing 0.326 inches of static. This is a, a tech manometer, DG8. And the reason that this one is reading correctly is because this manometer will never lie to you. Now, super expensive manometer, but it's always going to read accurately. And well, we use both these all the time. I do use a field piece I carry with me all the time. I use it for a lot of diagnostics, but I'm aware of the nuances of it and the need to zero them. So I'm not saying you have to have a very expensive manometer or don't measure static. What I'm saying is if you're going to use the less expensive tools, let's make sure you're using them properly. So this is really close to our true static. And again, over here on measure quick, we're showing 1.19. So let's figure out how we're going to get rid of this. So the first thing we want to do, and I just want you to see this here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out for just a minute. Uh, actually, let me do it here. Let me go into indoor measurements and scroll down to the bottom. Now, these manometers, I believe they're doing, these are the field piece ones, are doing some kind of averaging uh, of their readings to make them look a little bit more stable. I'm going to pull these probes out here, one out of the supply and one out of the return. And what I want you to notice is, is how slowly these are coming back down. I got my return one down and it's to, just to get stable, right? And obviously, uh, if I take a look at here, I've got one, even though they're out of the airstream reading 0.9 and one reading 0.08. So we're showing a static pressure of 0.98 without the manometers even being connected. This is a problem. We don't want to have that happening on there. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we're zeroing in two places. We want to zero the manometer and we want to zero them and measure quick. And then once they're zeroed in both places, going forward, we only have to zero it on the manometer when we start using them. Now, I've got this pulled out and I put it up here for a reason. If you were to take this tubing and you were to drop it down and the weight's on here and it kinks this off, it's gonna create a pressure on the manometer. And you can see that went from 0.98 to 0.90, so it's already registering a pressure and it's a false pressure on there. So the two choices you have are either make sure there's no strain on your tubing, or if you're gonna maybe leave it in a ductwork, just pull the tubing off completely. And I'll take this, this manometer here, I'll do the same thing. I'm just gonna pull the tubing off completely and we'll let those stabilize for just a second. And now that they're stable here, we have the green light flashing. What I wanna do is tap on the button and it's gonna flash blue. So just a quick tap, it's gonna flash blue and that's zeroing the manometer. So now the, what we're telling the manometer is there is no pressure on you. You should be reading zero. Now if we go back to measure quick here, you're still gonna see we're at 0.89 and 0.07. And that's a problem here. So what we're gonna do is go into the toolbox and we're gonna go into probe manager, scroll down towards the bottom and you're gonna see return external static, supply external static, and we're gonna hit zero and you'll see the probe zero successfully. And we'll hit zero here and the probe zero successfully. So now I have a true zero in both places. Now the zero in here will never change. It's locked in right now. So now I've zeroed it in software, zeroed it in the hardware. So now if I go ahead and we read the pressures on here, we go ahead and we'll connect this back up, take the return down here, we'll hook it up. Again, these probes, doesn't matter. You know, if this is the 
the, where the direction the air is going, it doesn't matter whether the tip's pointed this way or this way, as long as it's parallel to the airstream. Okay, so we just want to put it in parallel. So I'm going to put this facing up here towards the blower, put it down here. And then you can see if we go back into this for just a second here, that my static pressure now, total external static pressure is 0.34. We'll just go into the house and show you the same place here. So 0 0.362, 0 0.334, really close to each other. And that's the way that it, it should be. Now, one last thing here, I want to go into the plus key for just a minute and I'm going to hit the question button that puts you to our support page. Under support, you're going to see this called quick guides right here. If you click on the quick guides and then click on the link to the quick guides, you'll see there's a, a quick guide for starting a project for the visual assessment and for the measure quick uh, workflows, or you can get all three guides. If you click on the probe placement guide, it's going to go out to our Dropbox folder and it's going to pull up a quick start guide showing you basically how to do the visual assessment, how the probes are placed, how to zero the manometers and manometer placement. Again, we talked about how important it is to be in the right place when you're making a measurement. This is an air handler, right? So the supply duct is external to it, the filter is external to it. But what we're, the, the coil is built in. So when we're measuring external static pressure, it's before the, before the, uh, in between the filter and the air handler. So before the air handler, after the filter, and in the supply duct, right? That's the two places we want to be because that's what's external to the appliance that's rated. If we're to come over here on a furnace, and you're going to have to probably get in here low so you can get a look in here, but the furnace is rated by itself. So the coil is external to it, right? So we want to make sure that we're here in the uh, return duct. Again, the filter's on this side. So we're in the return duct after the filter. And then there's another port that is way back here below the, uh, below the evaporator coil. Here's the manometer sitting here on the side here, but below the evaporator coil where we're measuring our static pressure in there. So again, if you're not in the right spot, like if I didn't put this, if I put the probe in the supply duct, I'd be completely neglecting the pressure drop created by the coil and I'd get a lower than normal static pressure reading. So it's very important you're in the right spot, so make sure you're referencing the quick start guides uh, when you're doing that. So this is uh, pretty much the easiest way of making sure these are set up properly. I know somebody's gonna ask about this stand here, this lovely stand made by Joe for us. Uh, if you wanna know how to make this stand, email joe at measurequick.com and ask him about the iPad stand. He could tell you the parts. I think he got them all off Amazon. So he'll be really excited to hear from you. But this is really nice adjustable stand uh, to hold the iPad, hold your iPhone. It's really nice and solid uh, when you clamp it on top of the unit. I use it all the time when I'm in here doing demos and stuff. Uh, but Joe can give you some information on that. Or maybe we'll just put the parts in the link in the bottom of the video. Either way, you should call Joe because Joe likes to talk on the phone. So. But anyway, if you got any questions or comments, please leave them in the video. This is Jim again with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.